Perfect timing. Somebody's TV is on loud. <laughs> uh, hey, everybody. This is Billy Harris in Los Angeles. Welcome to the show. Whose TV is that? As long as it's not Al's TV. I don't think it's Al's TV. Al doesn't even have a TV. It's a tough a time at NBC these never, days. We'd know? never watch TV. What's the, what's the problem? Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Great to see so many of you. We are on Zoom Live. We are on Facebook Live. We're on Twitter Live. We're on something called Twitch. I don't know what that is, but I guess the kids do. Um, this is our third night of our uh, Red All-Star cook-along with my dear friend Tyler Florence and the very sexy Matt Macera. But to put those both guys to shame in New York City, the one and only Al Roker, um, who is with us tonight, Al, how's the weather in New York City tonight? It's spectacular. I'm looking out <laughs> my window, and uh, the pizza rat has gotten rid of his sweater. Uh, it's great. Uh, the, all the all the fabulous uh, millennials are walking around with their kids and baby Bjorns. It's just <laughs> wonderful. Kids and the baby Bjorns in New York City. Well, we're glad that you're with us. Great to see you again. Al is here to lend his witty banter and weather forecasts throughout the country wherever you are in the world right now al can tell you what the weather might be like tomorrow so he anyway can, but he's not going to because he's enjoying this lovely because <laughs> he's enjoying the gin cocktail everybody Charlotte and the nice folks at, at all right well we're glad you're here al and everyone else joining us let's cut to tyler florence real quick tyler mise en place what does everyone need to have ready for the cooking show tonight i thought it was tyler florence i didn't know it was tyler mise en place yeah it is <laughs> And can you what guys hear me? Are, are, we, uh, are we all live? Yeah, you're live. So excited to be with you guys today. So we're going to be grilling some delicious Alaska halibut fish tacos for you. You can easily <laughs> translate this for the, stub, for the stove and into the oven um, if you want to. Simple uh, process. But we, got, we have beautiful halibut. We've got the, the fixings for a great pico de gallo. We're going to be putting together um, a really delicious guacamole pink chili mayonnaise and then putting this together where it's a really delicious build your own fish taco bar perfect for the summer now back to you al <laughs> look at you back you to you al um you, al's drinking a goblet of gin so but that's okay that's part of the experience here tonight um before we get to making cocktails we want to introduce hugh, hugh davies um also in new york city via great britain somewhere from uh, the Red Campaign. Obviously, this is an amazing organization Al's worked with for a really long time, Tyler and myself. I'm going to turn it over to Hugh. Once again, we're streaming all over the world right now. So, Hugh, uh, for those that aren't familiar with the Red Campaign, let's talk about all the amazing work and what exactly Red does for the past 15 years. Thank you, Billy. Can you hear me okay? Um, we good can. Evening. I'm Hugh from Red. Very excited to be here tonight. Thank you all for joining. Um, Al, Tyler, Billy, Paul, Charlotte, um, we are enormously grateful for uh, making this possible. This is the third in our series of four cook-alongs. We are loving them. Um, they've been fabulous. We're super excited for tonight. Um, we are really honored as an organization and as a small team to have so many brilliant people support us. So thank you and thank you to everyone in the Zoom and watching us wherever you are. Um, this is actually Red's 15th anniversary year. Uh, we're officially a teenager. We have a new campaign underway. It's called Summer Rediscovered. We are lucky enough to have amazing chefs, stars, and all sorts of other brilliant people doing brilliant things for us to help raise money and awareness over the next month. Um, it's fun. It's colorful. Tonight's delicious. Um, it's important. We're raising money to fight COVID everywhere. Um, I think many of us here in the US and, and in other places feel like the world is getting back to normal, and we want that to be the same for everyone everywhere. Um, we've raised, uh, Red has raised uh, more than $650 million to date, with 220 million people. Um, we want to keep doing that work, so your support is really appreciated. Um, I want to say a big thanks to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. They are matching every dollar. So everyone who bought a ticket, thank you. It's $25, but it's actually worth $100 to the Global Fund, so thank you for that. Wherever you're watching tonight, you can also donate, and that's being matched three to one. Um, so go to red.org slash summer. Uh, I think Paul will also drop a donation link into the chat as well. Um, but we're very grateful. We're excited for this. And I just want to finally say thank you to our Red Support and Merck for helping make this possible. Um, we're very grateful. So onwards. Um, have a great night. Uh, Billy, back to you. Thanks All right. Again. Thank you, Hugh. Thank everyone. Uh, we will put the donation link in the chat, like Hugh said. 
These are all suggested donations of 25 bucks, but with the match, it becomes a hundred hour donation. This is our third night. Some of you have joined us before, uh, but we're gonna also go to Charlotte Voicey, uh, not in Miami tonight, not in London tonight, but coming to us live from Brooklyn, New York. And right. uh, we have a delicious cocktail. We are making the cucumber smash, I believe, right, Charlotte? That's right, Billy. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> Hi, Al. Uh, right. Excited to uh, make, mix up a cocktail with you all. So we've got a fabulous, refreshing Hendrix gin cocktail just to get the night started. And I took a little peek at Chef Tyler Florence's recipe and pulled some inspiration from that. So we're going to use some fresh cucumber, fresh cilantro, a little bit of pineapple. It's an easy one to make, but there are a few steps. I'm just going to walk everyone through it, okay? So the first thing everyone needs is a cocktail shaker, right? So get your cocktail shaker out, and the first ingredient we're going to put in is some little bits of fresh cucumber. It take about an inch of a cucumber, and you just want to chop that up into small little bits because we're going to muddle this. Now, before we muddle, we're going to add a half ounce of simple syrup. This is just sugar and water. It's a little trick we have behind the bar just to add sweetness to cocktails, so a half ounce of simple syrup, okay? And those two in the shaker, we're ready to muddle. So you would take a muddler if you have one. If you don't, you can use like a rolling pin without the uh, handles on the end, or you can use the pestle from a pestle and mortar. Just something that you can press down, twist around, and you start to get the juices and the flavor of the cucumber out of the pieces there, okay? So Al's just keeping an eye to make sure I'm doing this correctly. Are we, are we good, Al? Yep. I'm, I'm already muddled. Okay. Al is fully muddled, everybody, fully today. Muddled. Fantastic. Next up, we're going to use some citrus, and we're going to use some fresh lime here because the lime and cilantro is just that dynamite combination. So you want to use the juice of about half a lime. So take a lime, uh, whatever kind of citrus juicer you might have at home, and you just want to press that straight into the cocktail shaker. Right? Anytime we use citrus in a cocktail, you want it to be as fresh as possible um, so that's something you can just do in the moment and it's going to taste nice and bright now we're going to add some cilantro so you can just literally pick off a few loose leaves we're just going to drop them in those don't get muddled they just drop in and then save in the best till last two ounces of hendrix gin of course then, of course yes hendrix is made with cucumber so it's a great choice for this particular cocktail okay and an extra ingredient that you can add in if you have it, but you don't have to, is pineapple juice, okay? Mm -hmm. Pineapple juice is nice and bright and big and bold, and it will really stand up against the tacos that you're going to have later on. So you can freshly juice a pineapple if you have a juice extractor at home. Otherwise, you can buy pineapple juice quite easily. And I recommend about an ounce of that into the cocktail shaker. Now we are ready to shake it up. So ice into the shaker. <laughs> You want to put as much ice as you can fit in there because it just helps to really integrate the flavors and cool down the drink. And we're going to give it a good shake. Let's turn it right in five minutes. Uh -oh. You want to shake it for at least, like, there we go. I can see some people shaking. You want to shake it for at least 20 seconds or so. That's going to really cool down the ingredients, integrate everything together. And now this cocktail goes... Over fresh ice, I take like a, a tumbler or an old fashioned glass, fresh ice in that glass, and then you just strain that beautiful cocktail that we just prepared straight over the ice into the glass. You can see the colors from the cucumber and the cilantro coming through. And to garnish here, we'll just take inspiration from the ingredients. So we can add some cucumber slices, you can cut a piece of fresh pineapple, or here's a cool trick you can just Pluck some of the leaves off of your pineapple because otherwise you would throw them out and you can tuck them in the glass there. Looks kind of pretty. Looks great on your Instagram. And that's the cucumber cilantro smash. Thanks for being here tonight and look forward to a wonderful evening. Thanks, Billy. Here, Charlotte just got delivered to me in the studio. So uh, a Perfect. little toast to you. Mm. It's very so. impressive watching all these people uh, preparing and actually becoming cucumber moils. <laughs> Oh, that is exactly what they're doing. They are becoming cucumber moils. That is, uh, that's a new hashtag, Al, a cucumber moil. Cucumber moil? Yes. Uh, Charlotte, the cocktail's delicious. I see Big Mac. These guys are back again. You're shaking up the cocktail. Hey. If, if my memory worked, I'd remember where they're from. San Diego. Is that right? That's right. You got it. 
San Diego with the Big Mac. You guys are making cocktails. Thanks for coming back and supporting everything. Hope you're doing fabulous. Thank you. You too. Okay. We are ready for Tyler Florence in the kitchen in beautiful Marin County, California. Um, Tyler's a big shot. He's got like six cameras on him up there and a whole team that's going to switch angles and close-ups and things like that. So, Tyler, I guess it's time for some Alaskan halibut fish tacos. We got people cooking all over. So take it away, my friend, and guide us through. Thank you so much, Billy. An absolute pleasure being with everybody tonight. Welcome everybody who's tuning in from around the world. Uh, we so appreciate your contribution tonight uh, for the Red Campaign. Uh, it's an organization I've been really passionate about for a very long time. We're excited to be cooking with you tonight. Uh, this is Matt Massera, our corporate chef. He's going to be hanging out with us, Hello, everybody. Moving, moving stuff around, keeping the show going. <laughs> Uh, so we can really kind of cook together tonight. We're going to be grilling Alaska halibut fish tacos. Perfect for the summer. We've got a couple of really great techniques, some really dynamic flavors, a really beautiful presentation. And I think we're going to have so much fun tonight. Are you ready? We are yes. ready. <laughs> I love it. All right, cool. So, so first things first. So we're going to be grilling these fish tacos with, with sort of a little hybrid, right, which is great. Now, you can easily modify this. Uh, on a stove top and also in the oven. So if you've got a cast iron pan, uh, you can mimic exactly what we're gonna do uh, going from your stove top. If you wanna make sure you preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Um, now, when we start the, uh, the, the, the halibut on the grill, sort of mimic the same thing with your halibut in your saute pan. And then at one point in time, we're gonna tell you to switch it and put it into the oven. And it'll take about 20 minutes to cook all the way through, but it's absolutely perfect. But what we're gonna be doing is this. Now, if, if you're not doing this this summer, I think you're really kind of missing out on one of my absolute favorite grilling techniques. And that's using this amazing cast iron griddle. And this is from Lodge. You can pick these up. I, I've had this one for like 20 years. I, th this thing takes a licking and keeps on ticking. And it's perfect for the grill because we can, we can actually get all the great flavor, all the great heat without having to lose anything through the grates, which is the most annoying thing ever if you've got really expensive fish and some of it starts to fall through and you get flare ups. This, this technique is so fabulous and perfect. I can't wait to share it with you, right? So what we're going to do now is we're going to put this on top of the grill, and this is our cowboy cauldron here in the backyard, and we're just going to drop this in. Now, we've got um, uh, mesquite coals that have been rendering down for uh, about 20 minutes, and they're, you know, nice and, like, red and glowing, and we're going to get a nice even heat distribution from one point to the other. We're going to let this preheat for a couple minutes while we're talking about our fish. So check this out. We have two really beautiful center cut real thick and this is not like this is bigger than what you would normally sort of cut into for a portion these are two big fat center slabs of alaska halibut that we just got from the store and i really like alaskan halibut for this because um it's night it stays really moist it's easy to cook it has a right nice neutral flavor to it and everybody absolutely loves it if you've got a seafood lover um that that um, really loves a salmon and tuna and you have people who like like fish but like more milder fish halibut's totally the way to go for this and i think you're going to love it especially with this technique that i'm about to show you which i'm, I'm super pumped about so guys so we're going to take our fish here now this is like about two pounds of fish and this is going to be uh plenty to feed say you know four to six people and make just a ton of tacos and what we're going to do is gonna take, thanks buddy we're going to take our olive oil and the olive oil is going to go right on top of the fish and then we're going to hit with a little bit of salt and pepper and then we're going to throw it straight on top of our griddle and again, the griddle, if you want to think about the griddle, is not so much about the thing you cook pancakes on, on top of your grill outside. This is a Spanish plancha, right? So that's, you got to sort of switch your mind here a little bit into um, how, uh, you know, some of the most exciting, like, flavors that kind of come off wood fire cooking in the summertime are cooked. And that's actually on a flat surface over top of an open fire. And I just love it just because you don't lose anything and, and the color's great and, and, and the texture is really fantastic and, and it's just 100% utilization. It's totally cool. All right, hey, so Tyler, I, I wanted Tyler, to know. Is that, is, I just want, is, is the skin on that or off? Yeah, yeah. So we've got the skin on top of here. I like it. I think it's really nice. If you want to cut it off, go ahead. I think the skin's full of like really delicious omega-3 fatty, uh, like really good healthy fats for you. So we yeah. left it on, but we're going to be searing this down first. So we've got skin on the halibut. You, if yours don't ha ha have it, no big deal whatsoever. But, um, but we're going to be cooking the skin, the skin side down first. Hey, Tyler, also question another now. question. 
I got another question. Uh, if you're a chef out there, does everybody have to be as jacked as you two? <laughs> Just yes. You know, yeah. we, we don't let you in the club. Just wondering. Speaking of jacked, speaking of jacked, Al, I'm watching you ride your, your bicycle around New York City. You're looking good, brother. Thank you. I'm, I'm trying. Trying. Tyler, great, do you think, can, wait, Tyler, can we send a cowboy cauldron to Al? I, Al, we can get that on the Upper East Side, right? They don't well, care, right? I've got a backyard. I, I, I've got, <laughs> that's all, I've that's got, all you need. I've got, a, in my backyard, I've got a hasty bake oven. I've got two. Uh, wait, an easy bake or a hasty no, bake? hasty bake. Hasty <laughs> bake. I thought you and said an easy I've bake. Got, I, I've got two big green eggs also back there. All right. Well, you're getting a cowboy cauldron for your birthday. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's like it's like Oprah. You get a cauldron. You get a. Cauldron. You get a cauldron. Everyone gets a cauldron. Just Look at this boy, advertising boy, for the cowboy boy, cauldron. In trouble. <laughs> so my, my my wife got me two of these for my birthday, and these are like handmade in uh, Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, mm. A really amazing company that we just love to work with. I think they're kind of cool. Uh, Cowboycauldron.com. If you want to take a look at that, I just think these are super fun. Like this, because we entertain a lot here in our backyard, and and no joke, we're constantly cooking for fifteen or twenty people, and you could sling chicken, sling steaks, and that thing is just about. And, and dude, I've got I've got big green eggs. I've got Cajachinas. <laughs> I've got Traegers. They're all in the garage. Like this is my grill, and this is what I've been cooking all summer long. I oh. love it. And it's great. Okay, so the so the fish is cooking now. This is what I love about this. We're gonna let that sear and get really really nice and crispy, and then we're gonna flip it. It's gonna take about twenty five minutes on top of the grill, on top of the griddle, and and you're done. And and we're gonna be serving this kind of family style, so you can kind of break. Uh, really big, juicy chunks of fish and kind of slide them into uh, the corn tortillas with pink chili mayonnaise. The presentation is really cool. And I think this is a great um, alternative to you know what people think about fish tacos. This is all the flavor and a really just sort of nice kind of workload cut in half, which I think is fun. All right, cool, guys. So now we're going to pivot uh, real fast. We're going to make a, a pico de gallo. And then with the pico de gallo, we're going to be making a quick little guacamole. Now, the guacamole is doesn't even really require a recipe, so we, we didn't include it. Um, but I want to show you how easy it is to take this one thing and then literally turn it into something else. Okay, so we've got one pint of these great uh, tomatoes we just got from the store. We got two jalapenos, and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you a little trick with that. We got I got one lime, we got an onion, and we got a little bit of cilantro. Okay, so, so these are all the ingredients you're going to need just to make a really good pico de gallo. And the difference between a pico de gallo and, say, a salsa is just how chunky the tomatoes are going to be, right? So we're going to take, this is going to be, it's kind of like a nice, big, hearty, almost like a fresh tomato salad on top of the fish tacos. All right, so we're going to take these guys, and we're just going to cut them. It's kind of right in half. Super Perfect. duper juicy. And Tyler, I'm just going to remind everyone, everyone, please put your questions in the chat. If you have, want to know about the weather, we can ask Al. If you want to know about making pico de gallo and fish tacos. Um, you can ask Al. You, you can could also Al, just Al, ask Al because he's got it all in his backyard. That's right. By the way, Tyler, if you're looking for a great tortilla, there's a place in Lawrence, Kansas. Uh, they, it's called Caramello Tortillas. Uh, and they, they, they're not corn their flour but they make them with duck fat with pork <laughs> fat or with avocado fat and they are the Whoa. they puff up when you put them on the griddle they are the best tortillas i've ever had check out the gps map on al yeah look at Al. hey al and the, and the joint gail wants to know if you got it she called it the grill griddle thingy you wanted for father's day i guess you had a request for did you get the i thing? did i i well you know what i i got a, a a made in uh carbon steel uh oh, gr oh great pan. you got great one of those. i didn't get one of those yeah pan with, with holes in it yeah I, yeah yes, those I, are fantastic i did get so like it's like those. a saute pan you put on top of your grill yes yes those are amazing so, and I don't have I'm one. I'm very yet. excited. I have not used it so, yet. I literally just got it this weekend. So I'm, uh, and I, I did not grill. I went to uh, Pig Beach, Matt Abdu's place. I love Matt Abdu, and I love Pig Beach. I've been there. I saw you there. It's amazing. Uh, let me. Any cooking? I see a lot of people drinking gin cocktails right now, Tyler. I don't know if everyone's yep. just drunk or somebody's cooking. I see Jesse Magaldi. You guys are already eating. I'm gonna. Do you have questions for Tyler? You already made the you already made the tacos and you're eating them all. You can unmute. Sure, made the tacos. That's how easy this recipe is. Yeah. You can just get ahead of it. Hi, Jesse. Say hey. 
they're, hey they're bomb, right? We actually, uh, we went ahead and used some tile fish for these tacos. Tile fish, nice. That's and are, you, are you having a good taco experience right now? Yeah, so far so good. We had a couple of gin drinks earlier. Um, <laughs> we're on Eastern time, so we were getting hungry. Couple gin drinks, you can make any kind of taco, so it's perfect. <laughs> All right, thanks for being here, guys. All right, Tyler, back to you or Al. Okay. All right, so we're, we're, we're mincing this onion, right? So we've got like one half of a Spanish yellow onion, so it's nice and sweet, right? And we're going to get a really nice dice on top of this. I'm going to fold that in, and then we're going to be seasoning this up with like a little bit of salt and lime juice to kind of balance out the flavor. But I think that like really delicious, crispy, raw onion flavor on top of summer tacos like this, because because the, the fish is going to be simple but delicious, right? So we're going to, as soon as it comes off the grill, we're going to be finishing that with lime juice. But I think uh, making sure this pico de gallo is nice and zesty and big, lots of really good savory flavors, is definitely the way to go. Now, I want to, so we got the tomatoes cut, we got the onion cut. I want to switch gears to chilies real fast um, because we kind of get these stories all the time. These are just two little sort of medium-sized jalapenos, and and this is not the hottest thing in the world. You know, this is not the new kid on the block in the chili you know space. Um, they're hot, but not crazy hot. But then, if you want to like have the flavor of the chili without necessarily having like, all the heat, I want to show you two different techniques. I'm going to cut one one way. That's going to take the chili heat and kind of cut it in half, if not more than half. And then this thing is going to have, you can have like almost like all the heat, but not necessarily all the heat either. So I'm going to show you two really good techniques on these and how you can like maximize the flavor and not necessarily worry about all the burn. Okay. So first things first, we're going to take this, uh, this jalapeno, and then we're going to take this one, cut it in half, and then we're going to cut it in fourths, right? So now what we're doing is exposing um, the, all, the evil stuff inside this chili, right? So this is where all the capsaicin lives, inside this webby part and also inside the seeds. And capsaicin is a chili oil that makes chilies hot. Okay, so now we cut it in fourths. What you can do is just take your sharp knife and kind of run it up the center and then disconnect this part right here, which is a super hot pot, so hot, hot part. So then we, what you have here is like these little small like cheeks of chili Hashtag cheeks of chili. Oh, the um, cheeks of chili. <laughs> hashtag chili cheeks. Wasn't, wasn't that a sequel to the Dukes of Hazard? It was the cheeks yeah, of chili. That's what Daisy. That's what Daisy Duke used to wear. She used to wear chili that's cheeks. Right. You used to see her <laughs> cheeks of chili. <laughs> hashtag hashtag chili cheeks. I didn't know. I didn't know you liked you like Daisy Duke. She was a Barbara Bach. She was a thing. no. I, actually, I don't. I, I actually just. I'm thinking of Billy Harris. In his Daisy Dukes. Yes, you are thinking of me at my Daisy Dukes, Al. It's it's yeah. uh it's a very it's an Instagrammable moment. It's, yeah, it's, it's my special. Listen, listen, that's Al, the chili listen, space. Billy I like. spends a night in my house. I've seen him walk around in his underwear looking for a cappuccino in the morning. I've seen those chili cheeks a couple of times. Hey, oh, let's talk about this. All right, so what? So what I think oh, you just man. lost Sharon. <laughs> she she's been here. She's seen it too. She sees she's, it every day. <laughs> Sorry, well, Sharon. Way, I, I, Charlotte all, just I've left. Charlotte said I'm out. <laughs> all right, so check it out. Check it out. Check it out. So, so we're going to take the chili, and they're going to get a nice dice out of it, right? Oh, so wow. then you get the flavor of the chili. And don't get me wrong. It's still going to be kind of spicy, but you're mm -hmm. not going to get that big power pop of, of really uncontrollable heat. So I, I think if you're looking for a great way to use chilies, but you're not really a big fan of all the kind of super duper hot stuff, I think, no. you know, taking the web out of the middle, hashtag chili cheeks, and then taking the chili cheeks and getting a nice dice out of it will get you something fun. So that's one way to cut them off. And this other way, right, so we're back to our jalapeno here, right? So mm -hmm. the, all the really hot stuff starts about right here. Okay, so this is like professional territory here, right? This is for chili heads only. But if you want to take it, and kind of cut it into simple circles. This is easier. And then what I like to do is just kind of go all the way up to where the the webby stuff starts and then just stop, all right? So I'll save this for me a little bit later, but then you've got this like nice sort of medium heat zone with the jalapenos that we can slide straight into our pico de gallo, just like that. And then you, you can use your chilies a couple different ways, um, but you, you can really kind of control the heat and have a good time with oh, wow. it. Tyler, somebody wants to know, can you, I mean, obviously you can, but do you ever just uh, throw the uh, the chilies onto the grill, onto the cowboy cauldron? Can you yeah, just grill them I up? Yeah, I think that's really, really great. As a matter of fact, um, we, uh, uh, we, 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 this is a, a, a recipe we shot for a cookbook, and we actually serve it with whole grilled jalapenos, which I think is kind of fun, right? 
I love that. It's a great idea. To kind of give it a little more flavor. A lot of smoke too, peat. right? Some smoke to the yeah, jalapeno. Yeah, smoky note, sweeten up the chili, which is great. All right, so now we're going to hit it with with lime juice. And um, my my producer Amanda Gold um, hates cilantro um, with uh, uh, with passion. Um, and I think there's a lot of people out there because we actually did a poll of all of our people in our cooking class, and uh, it was it's about a, seventy thirty. It was about 70, 30. So I'm just saying there's about 30% of the people in there tonight that, that, that think cilantro is the devil's lettuce. And so really? I'm just saying you can, you these can are, switch gears. People who have a lot of things on their minds, obviously. Yeah. Well, the devil's know, lettuce. The people are that, that, that passionate about not liking cilantro. <laughs> yeah. Dude, Come on, people. She, it's like a visceral thing for her. She's like, I cannot stand cilantro. A lot of people think it's very soapy. Well, I, I'm, but what I'm saying is I'm your friend. And I'm here for you. And I think you could switch gears and go basil. You could go fresh oregano. You could go chives. Well, you can go basil. parsley. A couple Jeez. different directions. Listen, I'm cilantro all day long. Um, but we, we're here for everybody, Al, aren't we? No, not really. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, not really. <laughs> no. Hey, Tyler. We're Tyler and Al, we're going to check in with Marisol Christensen. Hi, Marisol. Where are you joining us from? You have to unmute. Hey everyone, I'm also from San Diego. Big Mac invited me, I had to come to the party. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, well welcome. You got the chef's apron on, you're cooking. Say hello to Tyler, say hello to Al. Hey Al, Hi, hey Tyler, <laughs> nice to meet Hi, you Hi Marisol, guys. where do you fall, where do you fall Nikki, get, get a good shot of this? I, I love cilantro. I don't understand the soapy taste either, but I have heard it from yeah. other people. But maybe, maybe people. Maybe people are cleaning it with soap. I don't know. <laughs> exactly. Right. Don't I use Dawn dish I think it's delicious. Exactly. Delicious. There, so are you, are you making the tacos right now? You, uh, What's going yeah, on over there? Following along, I, I put the taco, well, I put the fish in the back. I haven't started yet. Should I start the the fish, Tyler? Should I put it on the pan? Where you been? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, put it on. Wow. Get it on the wow. pan, yeah. So here's the deal. If you're gonna, uh, are you, Tyler are you, are went you in on you, Marisol. Your I'm sorry. Where you been? Where you been? Yes. Huh? Where are you been? You yeah, know, where you been, Marisol? Show, he's a sweetheart. He's never even started but, yet. I was like, but in his own backyard, <laughs> he'll gut you like a fish. <laughs> wow. <laughs> where you been? All right, thank you, Marisol. We're muting you now. We'll be. <laughs> <laughs> I have the power. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Marisol. Right. We've made fun of you. Now we're shutting you Sorry, down. Now we're Marisol. shutting you down. Sorry, Marisol. That's just the way it goes. Okay, here. Okay, so here you go. All right, go, here Tyler. Go. go. No, so, so this is what's really cool about the pico, right? You can use the pico to flavor the guac, right? So we're going to take these two avocados. We're going to roll the knife around the pit, right? They're going to crack these things open just like that. And um, this is a really great way to be able to get the pit out. And I want you to be careful if you do this at home. Mm -hmm. but you're going to take your knife and you're going to tap it into the pit and just kind of give it a little twisty twist, right? And then the pit will kind of slide right out like that, right? So we're going to do that with both these guys here. And hey, then hey, Tyler, gonna, uh, is there is there a, a tip you have to maybe uh, hastening the ripening of an avocado? Yeah, put them in a paper bag. I, I, I think that, that's always like the real sort of fast track for me. If you get them because like, you know, avocados, like they're not ripe. And then, and then they're ripe for five minutes, and then they're overripe. And so, mm -hmm. I think if you want to um, sort of press the issue, I think if you put them into a paper bag, they'll ripen quicker, okay. for sure. And that goes with like for bananas and tomatoes and apples and anything. They kind of off gas, and uh, and they, they oh, get. I'm right doing that right them. now. I love that. You <laughs> off gas now? Are you off gas now? I'm off gassing right now. Al is definitely off the gas right now. Tyler and Al, people want to know right away, and, and for everyone, I hope everyone knows Al's a huge foodie and loves to travel the world and eating great food as well. Tyler and Al, both of you, is there food that you actually hate? Like you really hate? Uh, um, fennel. You first, Al. Fennel. You don't like fennel? Al doesn't like fennel. Tyler, you probably love to cook with fennel. I, 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 I'm growing fresh fennel in my garden. Tyler, is there, is there is there is there something you really despise? Is there a food you both? I, you know, you know, like to me, I, I don't I don't like airport Caesar salads. You know, like the ones <laughs> you get in the sad little plastic yeah. container with the rubber chicken and you know the 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 awful tasting Caesar salad dressing. I don't like. Here's a question for you, Tyler. I, I'm a bit of a purist. 
to me, once you put chicken or shrimp on a Caesar salad, it's no longer a Caesar salad. Yeah, well, that's it's a, a shrimp point. Caesar, it's a chicken Caesar. Yeah. But the, the very definition of You're a right, Caesar Al. doesn't have a protein. Yeah. Yeah, it evolves. Al is right, it's Tyler. Like, it turns something else. It gets, it's called lunch. It, it goes evolves. From a lunch. I like it. It's like it's its own species. It's evolved. Yeah. It started yeah, as a it's, salad. It's, 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 now it's killing people. <laughs> now it's lunch. You, 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 you go from like an appetizer to lunch. Gain Portnoy, do you have a question? I heard you have a question. I got it's done mute. Hang on, Tyler. Here comes Jane. Hi. Portnoy's okay. complaint. And I also have a question for the chef. Uh, well, Al, I guess you're a chef too. Um, but so I'm with my Zoom cooking group. You guys jump in. Like we became a cooking group over COVID. And I know that you and your son also sort of became a cooking group over COVID. Yes. And it's like we used each month, right? So if it was Asian Heritage Month, we picked Asian dishes. If it was Women's History Month, we found cool female chefs. How did you and Nick pick your dishes? Uh, just whatever we were making, to be honest. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a very simple, I'm not a chef. I just cook simply. So it was a lot of roasting and grilling. And, and Deborah, my wife, said, why don't you do something with Nick? And we started doing it. And it like took off. I didn't know. I, 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 I mean, loved it. it. So please it keep doing it. It was so well, thank fun. You. In fact, I'm, I'm about to post one uh, from uh, Milk Street. It's, it's the world's simplest uh, fettuccine Alfredo. Uh, oh, it, girl, it's basically excellent. cheese. Al, do you want to join us? We do it every Wednesday. <laughs> well, I, every Wednesday, Al, in L.A. Wednesday, the Al. ladies oh, are going to have geez. you over. You know what? I, unfortunately, I, got, I, I do surgery on Wednesdays. <laughs> <laughs> every Wednesday. I have surgery every Wednesday. I'm using that, Al, I'm using that line from now on when everyone asks me. I, oh, I have surgery, I have surgery on, on Wednesdays. surgery on Wednesdays. But ten years. All right, uh, Jane, do you have a question for Tyler, too? We do. How do you preserve herbs? Herbs, Tyler. How do you preserve them? Um, well, so there's, you, you want to be able to preserve them both fresh and then preserve them both dry, right? So when you get um, herbs from the grocery store, you really have to think about them as a live plant that you want to try to keep alive, like flowers. So when you buy flowers and you bring them home, um, you don't shove them into the crisper drawer. You trim the bottoms and you put them in water. So if you want to always think about herbs the same way, and you'll definitely get another week of life out of them if you use them or not. So really? parsley, basil, fresh thyme, rosemary, sage. If you'll take the bottom, trim the edge, because you want to open up the, uh, the pores at the bottom of the plant, and then stick them into a um, nice big glass of fresh water, and either put them in the sun, uh, which they really, really love, and they actually start to kind of come back to life, um, or keep them in the fridge, and, and, and they'll be really great. That's one way to preserve them. And the other way to preserve them is just sort of just kind of commit to say you're going to dry them out. So this is my, this is oregano for my garden, as a matter of fact, right? So what I would do with this is I would take a bunch of it and I would, you know, put a piece of twine around the, the, the edge of this and I would hang this in my kitchen on my pot rack and then have like fresh dried oregano for pizza, which is kind of fun. You can even sort of shake it and crack it out. But there's two really good ways to preserve herbs um, alive and also dry. I, I think those are great. Good tips. Thank you. Let's make some right. sauce. Pink great. chili mayo, folks. All right, Here let's we go. go, Tyler. So, so this, this is like a really simple version of good pink chili mayo. So we got mayonnaise, we got sriracha, and then we've got um, we got cumin here, right? Now this could be any kind of hot sauce you want. I do, I like the viscosity of sriracha. I think it tastes really really great. It's got garlic and stuff in it. It's kind of nice. So we're gonna take. The, the three of these, the three great tastes that taste great together, and we're going to pop into a bowl and just give them a little mix. And then the red sriracha and the white mayonnaise make a nice pink sauce that is good on everything. It's good on a BLT. It's good on a burger. It's good on a grilled cheese sandwich. Hey, it's Tyler, good on just like dip your, Tyler, it's good dip got, your french fries. I've got one more thing for you to add to that sauce just for fun. <laughs> A, 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 just a little glug of sweetened condensed milk. Ooh. I like where you're going with that, Al. It was like, ooh, well, but not really. No, no, it's cool. I like it. It's a good idea. Like, I, I think that's great. Uh, where'd, th where'd that come from? Man? You just whipped out and went out pretty fast. Is that that's a, like a house favorite? You do it all the time? You know, we had somebody on the show. I can't remember who, but they did that for a, a seared tuna 
and, and as a sauce, and I've used it now for like lamb burgers and for seafood and and and, and that sort of thing. You know, I, I make two versions of it, one just like you did. Uh, yeah. And then for some folks who want something a little sweeter, I've got that version. Al, can I share a story with everybody? And I don't even know if you remember this one or not, but you and I have done a hundred demos on the Today Show over the years. Minimum. Thanksgivings, Christmases, all kinds of fun stuff. And one day I was going to show, like in the summer, I was going to show everybody how to sear a good piece of fish. And then literally, like, you got to love live TV. You were like, hey, on today's kitchen, we're here with Tyler Florence, and we're going to show me how, how to sear this, like, sea bass. And I went there to, to, like, throw the fish into the pan, and the pan was ice cold. And you and I sat there and told jokes for three minutes, and it was the, one of the best times of my life. <laughs> I remember that. It was a disaster, but it wasn't. <laughs> but it was good comedy. Uh, good TV, Tyler. It's good TV, Tyler. It was great, it was great TV. All right, gang, so here we go. Can we, can we catch everybody up where we are so far? Sure. So we got three little condiments, right? Like, th like three little pigs, like three little condiments, right? So we got our – there we go. There you go, boom. There you go. So we got, we got our pink chili mayo, okay? We got our guacamole, which takes a little bit of our pico de gallo, that we put into the smashed avocados is like a two for one special. It's like a buy one, get one free, right? So you make this, you take two scoops of this, you put this in the smashed avocado and all of a sudden you got some tasty guac. Okay. Let's, let's visit our fish. Shall we? Let's go visit it. I'm already eating the tacos, let's Tyler. Let's go visit. Let's go visit the fish. Okay. Oh, look, at that. look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Mm. Right. So this is the Ooh. cool thing about doing this, right? So, so, um, and think about this with pork chops and think about this with steak. So all the, the olive oil is starting to pull up here. This would cost flare-ups, but because we're kind of putting it on top of the griddle here, and you really got to think about it as like a Spanish plancha, like we're getting really nice texture. We're also getting the color. We're getting the smoke from the, the flavor from the, uh, uh, from the mesquite. It's just, it's the best of both worlds. So I think it's really something to think about. So instead of just thinking about, you know, I'm going to grill. I'm gonna I'm gonna cook outside and use my grill as a stove. I think it's kind of awesome. Here we go, guys. We're gonna trim up some of these green onions, and this is gonna be part of our little kind of topper. Nice knife cuts on this, on a bias. Good sharp knife. Greens and the whites, all the way up to the top. Nice and thin. Okay, really thin. All right, Tyler, while you're chopping, um, Teresa wants to say hello to Al, and we also want to remind everyone, I'm sure everyone here is already following Red on Instagram, but it's just at Red. Uh, yes. Teresa wants to say hello to Al. I think you guys met at the Apollo's 50th anniversary, right? Hang on, Teresa. There you go. Hi, we did. We Hi, did. Teresa. Hi, Al. How Teresa. are you? Good. That was that was a great night, wasn't it? The Duran Duran concert after. It wow. was. It was. That was cool. That's right. We were there I, with. I was hungry like the wolf afterwards. <laughs> Good night, everybody. I tore into right? some, some dogs that were running by. I'm going to yeah. mute Al in a moment, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa, nice where, are you, where are you joining us from, Teresa? Oh, Teresa. Well, my oh. kitchen floor, because my dog's a little high maintenance right now. <laughs> okay. Are you cooking on the kitchen floor right now? No, no, I huh. cooked earlier. <laughs> um, I'm from Coral Springs, Florida. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm Tyler and I and Matt, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're friends. Absolutely. Hi, What's up, Teresa? Teresa? What's up, Teresa? Hey, guys. How's it going? It's going good. It's going great. Good, good. All right. That's good. Well, thank you for joining All us right. tonight. All right, Tyler, back to you. Okay, here we go. So, so the fish is done, right? So I want to show you this. Okay, mm -hmm. so can you, we, we, we got to get a nice close-up shot of this. We got we got it. We got to go in for the zoom zoom. Okay? Zoom zoom. We got to go in for the zoom zoom zoom, and a boom boom. Okay. Now, so this fish is seared right on two sides, so nice and crispy on the bottom, nice and crispy on top. All right. And what we're gonna do? I'm gonna set this aside, and then we're gonna pull up our platter here. Okay. I'm gonna show you how to set this up. Now Matt is taking our griddle. And he's kind of finishing yeah. up some really good corn tortillas on top of that and kind of get them nice and hot. Okay. So then we're going to take our fish, our beautiful wild Alaska halibut. And we're just going to pile these into this really beautiful little space we got here. 
and then you just serve a big spoon on the side, and people can kind of like to kind of break it up as like one big thing. Can we get you got a nice big overall shot of this? So this is this is what I call like a big fun party platter, you know, top fish tacos by the pool. And I think it's such a great concept. I love the idea. Where do you want this, brother? Here, right here. Okay, go. So I'm gonna I'm gonna drop this right here, and and my my man Nick on the one and twos is gonna give you what we call a flyby. Uh, in, in the biz um, to kind of get those really good, super sexy close-up shots of our delicious fish. And then I'm, I'm going to plate one up for you, but um, as soon as he gets a shot, he's got it. Okay, boom. Here we go. You got I'll spin it. I'll spin it around. All right, Tyler, while that's spinning, Joanne wants to say hello to you right now. I think you guys know each other. Hi, Hi Joanne. Hello. What's up, Chinchuli? What's up, girl? How you doing? This is Joanne Chinchuli. Joanne Chinchuli uh, was the, uh, what, the original producer of Food 911 back in the day. Uh, she and I wrote a cookbook together. Um, we, we've, had, we've, we've laughed, we've cried. Um, she's one of the greatest television culinary producers in the country, hands down. And uh, she's a good hang on top of all that. What's up, girl? I know what a flyby is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Joanne, where are you joining? Are you in L.A., Joanne, or you're in New York, or neither? I am in L.A. Well, cool. Well, thanks for being here. And I know you know Ty Ty. So perfect. yeah, love you guys. <laughs> well, cool. Um, yeah, I, I, so I so, right, so check this out. Okay, so we got the platter set up, right? And and Matt's grilling some uh, tortillas, but I want to show you like what this fish looks like, right? Okay, so we got this right here, right? So then you literally the skin's nice and crispy, but then it literally look how flaky it is, right? And it just kind of breaks apart in these big beautiful chunks, and it look how gorgeous and soft and moist it is, right? And this is what I love about this technique of, of literally like plancha cooking outside on a grill, okay? So then the idea, as soon as Matt gets the tortillas together, that chunk of delicious, perfectly cooked, really, really moist, nice and flavorful Alaska halibut is going to be the meat of our taco. Isn't that pretty, guys? Beautiful. Beautiful. It's gorgeous. What do you think, brother? I All love right, it. I want to eat it. Front. Let's eat it, kids. Let's do it. Let's make all your dreams come true, Billy Harris. My dreams <laughs> right, are coming true tortilla. right now, for sure. You've, listen, if you want to go, you want to go flour. I'm not mad at you, right? Thank you, brother. Okay, so we're gonna go pink chili mayonnaise down first. I like the pink chili oh, mayo. It's a winner. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Kathy beautiful. Delgado right sitting now. outside just drinking cocktails. I love it. Today's <laughs> kitchen. There you go. There you go. Perfectly grilled. Mm. Yeah, and you get a little crispy fish skin in there, right? Gives a little crunch. That's the best part. A little thing, you know? The thing with another thing. Oh. Yep. And then uh, we're gonna go. We're gonna go some of this guac. It's a good looking taco. Right on top. And then we're gonna go a little pico. Peekaboo. On top of that. So you got a little color, you got a little crunch, you got a little chili heat, you got a little lime shebang going on. <laughs> lime and then we're going to top it off with uh, fresh cilantro and green onions. What did someone call cilantro earlier? Devil's water or something? Devil's lettuce. The, duff, <laughs> Devil's, Devil's lettuce. Gold, <laughs> duff Goldman, you could probably still find the tweet. He and I were in a, a, a t severe Twitter conversation, and I was defending cilantro, and he shut the conversation down by calling it the devil's lettuce. <laughs> the devil's lettuce. He called it the devil's lettuce. All, All right. right, gang, so we're going to hit this with a little lime. And then That's the only thing you need tool. here is just a good, you need a good buddy, right? You need cilantro, a the devil's, the devil's lettuce. lettuce. The coming devil's to, lettuce. Coming to Ralph's on Tuesday. But isn't that, isn't that beautiful, guys? Isn't that, that gorgeous? Is gorgeous. Isn't that pretty, bro? Amazing. Matt Macera, get into that. You should eat that, Matt Macera. Tuck in, brother. This is go, the ahead, real, go ahead. Real reason why I'm here. Three, two, one. Boom. Cheers. Thank you, Red. We had so much fun hanging out with you guys tonight. Al, I love you. I miss you, man. <laughs> Tyler's, you like, like, you Tyler's like, thanks, Red. I'm leaving. <laughs> right. Tyler's like, thanks, Red. I made tacos. Peace out. I got to go jump in the pool. Uh, these are great, Tyler. Before you go you jump, in, jump the in the pool, who wants Tyler to jump in the pool? You want me to jump in the pool? I want you to jump in the pool. Yes. You want me to jump in the pool? I want you to jump in the pool. 
Finish, finish the, the taco off. first. Finish the, finish the devil's lettuce first. I'll and then we want to go right now, man. Take uh, your I'll phone off. Go. Gotta take his mic yeah. off. Take your mic off. Mic take off. Take your pants off. Shoes off. <laughs> My new shoe. I've got some new sneakers. <laughs> some new vans. Are you ready to go? You gotta get shot on those. We getting a shot of this? You got a shot now of you're this? gonna jump into your pool on 80. Yeah. <laughs> We got a little sweat going on, Tyler. Ah, you, got a yeah, you better jump in that pool. <laughs> All right, here you go. Ready? I, we need. Are you ready? I'm gonna write in sure, the middle. Let's make sure we got the shot. Let's do a flyby. Let's do an over under. <laughs> right. We have a shot of this. Are this is ready? this is called the devil's, okay. the devil's lettuce. Everybody, this is the devil's lettuce. This is the devil's got, half gainer. I got. got we, we have no shot. We have no right. shot. We Don't can see Matt. We, got the on. we I saw got the one float one. before. We saw the the the. I got five cameras. Swan. Let's go. Swan Switch the camera of Tyler going okay, in the pool. Yet, right? Not there yet. Yeah. Don't don't waste <laughs> yeah. the shot, Tyler. Not there. Okay, Good job. Oh. Oh, now we got it. Woohoo! Wow. Okay. <laughs> the amazing thing it was a stunt man. That's the best. <laughs> yes. That was known as the devil's lettuce, everybody. That's Something. <laughs> there you go. Well, now, I guess Tyler Tyler won't be doing any more of a cooking demo. It's just right. Matt Masera Tyler's there. Show us the devil's <laughs> shrinkage. Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, everybody, Tyler, eat your tacos in the pool. Round of applause for Tyler Florence, ladies and gentlemen. Tyler Come Florence, on. Matt Masera. Charlotte Voicey making cocktails from London, Al Roker in New York City, always adding the sarcasm and great for everyone to hang, support Red. Uh, thank you, Hugh Davies, everyone cooking all over the country. We are on Facebook Live, we're on Twitter Live, we're on Twitch Live. Um, this is gonna keep playing on loop so you can see it all, which is great. We have one more little cook along on Saturday night with Joel McHale and Kristen Kitsch. Ooh. Everyone knows, click on the link. For everyone listening, use VIP, use the promo code REDVIP, and you get to be my guest, which is good. So we'll see everyone Saturday night. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you, Charlotte. Thank you, Al. Thank you, Hugh. Please donate to Red. 25 bucks, 50 bucks, whatever you can. Every dollar makes a difference. And it's also like a triple match, so we appreciate everyone's time. Have a great night. We'll see you on Saturday night. Thanks, Al. I'm going to play some music. I got to get some music going, right, people? What do you got going? How much thought, Al? All right, Tyler. Thanks, Tyler. I want to be your lover, Al. <laughs> well, what are you going to play? Yeah, play more print. <laughs> Tyler's out. It's just for us. Right? I ain't got no money. It's Billy Harris dance party, ladies and gentlemen. It is a Billy Harris dance party. That's where you live, right here. It's kind of funny. The devil's lettuce. Good.